What's the most surprising thing that you learned in the course of researching your book, Saving the Jews? Um, I was very disappointed in the Holocaust Museum on the bombing of Auschwitz issue um, I, because it's too involved to go into in a short interview, but the Jewish community in the United States was never in favor of bombing Auschwitz. The contemporary community. I mean, no Jewish organization of any consequence. Now, there were some fringe groups, but uh, and the reason they weren't in favor of it is perfectly obvious. If we were alive, if, if this were all happening today, and we knew there were a thousand or five thousand Jews at Auschwitz. Would we really bomb the camps and kill those people? Because you can say, you can talk about pinpoint bombing, and in 2009, that might make some sense. But it didn't make any sense in 1944. So if you had bombers dropping bombs, you're very likely to kill the very people you're trying to save. Now, that's a fairly morally difficult subject. And it's very easy to say, this is what you should have done. But anyone sitting here today who has to push a button and caused the deaths of people, who, by the way, the Russian army was 100, 200 miles away. So the Russians could have liberated Auschwitz at any point during this time period when the bombing could have taken place. And suppose that had happened. And suppose we'd killed all these people. Uh, and then the Russians liberated the camp, you know, the next day. It just, and, and so I've, the Holocaust Museum has bought into that. And I've written them letters, and I've sent them the documents. But, you know, political correctness is prevailing at the moment, but I'll be around for another 10 years and uh, hopefully we can get them straight. And in the course of doing the research per se, what surprised you, shocked you, saddened you more than anything that took you off, uh, well, off guard a little? Well, you know, uh, I did um, a lot of original research on the St. Louis incident, okay. which people think, and this is kind of interesting from a historiographical perspective, there are all these books on the St. Louis, but they all rely on the same information. And I did something I, I don't believe anyone has ever done, I'll stand to be corrected, but there's an organization in the American, Jew, there's hundreds of Jewish organizations, but one of them is called the American Joint Distribution Committee. And it was created in 1914 to basically use the wealth of American Jewry to save their co-religionists in Europe. Um, and the, the organization was made up of a lot of very wealthy people, and it still exists today. Um, and the joint, as it was called, um, was in charge of rescuing the passengers. Well, I wanted to look at their records, their internal records. Um, and I don't believe anyone has ever done that. And um, basically they copied their entire archives on the St. Louis for me, and I read it from, pay, you know, from beginning to end. And the story unfolds that all the Jews in America and a lot of the non-Jews are writing the joint and saying, Say, you got to save these people. And so this idea that American Jews wouldn't speak up, I don't know where these things come from. I mean, I think people just make them up. And um, uh, the, the joint was working very, very hard to save these passengers. Morgenthau, uh, who was the Secretary of the Treasury, is a contributor to the joint. And anyway, and I followed the story to the end, the people were all set free in Amsterdam. Uh, none of them went back to Germany. And so what's amazing is the records are all there. I mean, there's nothing controversial about this. The records are right there. Um, and when, you, when I went back to look at this literature, I didn't see where people had even consulted these records. And of course, this is the organization that was the point organization and that actually did solve the problem. So to me, not looking at these records, you know, is, is inexplicable, really. Well, it, it points to the importance of going back and doing the original right. research, That's because right. you're saying that a lot of the misleading information out there is not necessarily malicious information, right. it's misleading. That's right. That subsequent historians are going back and they're relying too much That's right. without going back and doing the hard work That's in right. the archives. That's right. Well, when you take a book like Kennedy's book in the Oxford American series on uh, you know, America during World War II, um, um, fear, crisis of fear, whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. um, um, Kennedy, who is one of the great historians of America, uh, simply relies on this older literature and says, you know, gets it wrong about St. Louis because he's not, he's writing of synthesis and he, he can't go back and do original research on everything. And, uh, and, and I think that's, 
you know, that's the job of people like me, you know, right. to get out and ferret these things out. And, and I want to say this, my book, um, even though some people in the academic world have attacked it, uh, Gene Smith's new biography of Roosevelt, FDR, relies on my book in his interpretation of what Roosevelt did in the Holocaust. So um, I called my book Saving the Jews as opposed to Wyman's book, The Abandonment of the Jews. And um, I'm hoping to supplant Wyman and 20 years from now people will be relying on this book. Um, and that's my goal. Now you've got, <clears throat> you probably produced a manuscript, I think you said, that was considerably longer than what right. was actually published. What is the one thing, looking back, that you wish had stayed in that book? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, think, I, I think I was, my publisher was a little too nice and let me put in more than I really needed to put in there. So, so I don't know. I, I can't really say. I okay. can't really say. <laughs> Well, Robert Rosen, thank you very much for coming here and uh, giving your provocative thesis a good hearing in Grand Rapids. Uh, it is May 7th, 2009. It's the eve of uh, VE Day. Right. And so this is a very apt time for us to be thinking about 64 years later, reevaluating what actually happened. Thank you for trying to set the record thank straight. You. Thank you for having me.